Um, yes, we'll continue for on our chapter on devotional service from Madhya Lila, chapter 22. And I'm not sure of the next verse. 62, is it? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhaktivinda <coughs> Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhaktivinda Sravasabdi Vishwakahe Sarita Nishaya Krishna Bhakti Kala Sarva Karma Krita Hoi Shraddha is confident, firm faith that by rendering transcendental loving service to Krishna, one automatically performs all subsidiary activities. Such faith is favorable to the discharge of devotional service. Firm faith and confidence are called shraddha. Hmm. So that word shraddha is not just faith, it's firm faith, but it's firm, firm faith includes complete confidence. Confidence in what? Confidence in the, the process of devotional service. When one engages in the Lord's devotional service, he is to be understood to have performed all his responsibilities in the material world. He has satisfied his forefathers, ordinary living entities and demigods and is free from all responsibility. Such a person doesn't need to meet his responsibility separately. It is done automatically. Food of activity karma is meant to satisfy the senses of the conditioned soul. However, when one awakens to Krishna consciousness, he does not have to work separately for pious activities. The best achievement of all fruit of activities is detachment from material life. And this detachment is spontaneously enjoyed by the devotee firmly engaged in the Lord's service. Is there more? I can't see beyond that word. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now uh, turn to the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Fifth chapter. And verse 11, Canto, fifth chapter, verse 41. Devarshi Bhutatma Nirnam Prati Nam Nakinkala Nayan Rani Charajam Sarvatmanam Ya Saranam Saranyam Kato Mukundam Prati Kartam. O King. One who has given up all material duties and has taken full shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda, who offers shelter to all, is not indebted to the demigods, great sages, ordinary loving beings, relatives, friends, mankind, or even one's forefathers who has passed away. Since all such classes of living entities are parts and parcel of the Supreme Lord, one who has surrendered to the Lord's service has made no need to serve such persons separately. And this is a very important verse because it awakens one to the reality and the exclusive nature of devotional service. In this material world, we have duties to family members, friends, people in general, to the society we live in, even to the demigods who provide material necessities of life, great sages who have given us the scriptures, forefathers who have less, left a legacy for us to enjoy, um, friends who we meet and interact with, relatives who we have certain relationships with. If one takes the devotional service and somehow neglects these other activities, there's no loss, mm -hmm. nor is one implicated in uh, not doing their duty. Because as Prabhupada explains in this verse either, it's also that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Sunam Bodham, 
and the source and the manifestation of everything temporary in this material world. So whatever temporary duties we have, when we serve the Lord, they are automatically uh, served. In other words, when you serve Krishna, you're serving everyone automatically. We use a very simple example. When you have a million dollars, you have a thousand dollars, you have a hundred dollars. Okay. So sometimes we see people push, push aside devotional service to take care of material responsibilities. And ultimately that's not necessary because, because of their attachment to material responsibilities or to the people engaged in material responsibilities. They think that devotional service is just like everything else. It's just another activity. And therefore, we have to give justification to equal amounts of time for everything. But this verse gives you the exclusive. Because when you take, come into this material world, you're, you're born a debtor. Your parents have given you this body. Your, the forefathers have given you the legacy of the, of, of the things that you have in the world. Uh, the demigods are providing the necessities of life to through the earth and um, the sages are giving you the scriptures. People in general are providing things that you need. The government or the society you live in is giving you a, an arrangement to work to live by. And so, so many things are provided from the outside. But this verse says, if one engages, in the service of Mukunda, who offers shelter to all, then there's no more debts. Why? The script the verse says, since all classes of living entities are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, one who has surrendered to the Lord's service has no need to serve such person separately. So uh, this is a, a very sweeping verse, and it's, it's very important to understand that sometimes we find ourselves caught in between material responsibilities and devotional activities. And we think devotional activities are always there, but my spiritual, my material responsibilities can't wait. And therefore we, we opt for that. What we do is we somehow or other decrease our relationship with the stream. In other words, when we break our Krishna consciousness in order to take the care, material responsibilities, we actually have to begin to re-pick up and try to see to get back where we were. And that may take time and may not even happen. So the idea is to, in, even if we have material responsibilities, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, yad karosi, yad anasi, yad dahosi, tadasi, yad, yad tapasi, tukonte, yad, who, you know, what is it? Guru Pararpanam. All that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all sacrifices you perform should be done as an offering to me. So we have to Krishnaize or spiritualize all aspects of our life, and that way we're always in the energy of bhakti. We're always connected to Krishna in the spiritual world. And that's an art that we have to learn. Um, sometimes, see, Krishna will test us, or sometimes you might say, well, is it Maya testing us or Krishna testing us? There's a big festival coming up. Like I used to, when I would do the uh, uh, Disciples Conference every April, um, we would be planning it for months, and then the days would be getting closer. And inevitably, someone who was planning to go, there would be you know, their sister-in-law is getting married and they're sending them a ticket to come to the wedding. Or a friend you haven't seen in a long time is going to come that weekend and he wants to see you. Uh, or um, something comes up that appears to be important. And then there's a quandary. Do I go and be with the devotees? We've been planning this festival. Or should I take care of my materials for responsibility? Many times, 
and this used to give me, I used to get really upset about this. The bodies would always take, would take the material thing over the spiritual. And uh, what happens is that they, uh, they water down and they lose their, they lose a little bit of their enthusiasm for Krishna consciousness. I mean, if it's an emergency situation, then that cannot wait. But, but uh, we should always go with Krishna consciousness and bring our material responsibilities and the people involved with them into Krishna consciousness. And that way, not only do we stay fixed in devotional service, but we also bring other people in like that. And so, yeah, that's why we say, do everything for Krishna, although it may be appearing to be something required on the bodily level, such as occupation, family responsibilities, marriages, uh, taking your final exam for your SAT tests. Or <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, the material world will always present op opportunities to deviate from devotion. So if devotees can remember this one point, and that point is, the more you get serious in Krishna consciousness, the more Maya will present to you options to deviate. Why? She sees, oh, this person's making advancement. Let me test them. And so the, she'll arrange something that appears to be, uh, you can't get out of. And uh, then the devotee struggles with that. So, um, yeah, so uh, this verse is very important, and it's it's alluded to from the previous verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So let's go back to that verse, which we were, yeah. Yeah, so again, the exclusiveness or the inclusiveness of Krishna consciousness is mentioned in that verse, but when you serve Krishna, there's nothing, there's no other obligation. You have reached perfection of all responsibilities. One who serves the Supreme Personality of Godhead is serving everyone completely and perfectly like that. Okay, let's go on to the next uh, verse. Oh, this is a very important verse, also from the Bhagavatam. Yata tayor mula nisheshene na dripyanti tatskanda bujo pasaka varo praya rajcha yatendriya nam tatai vasarvaham achukate jya. By pouring water on the root of the tree, one automatically satisfies the trunk branches and twigs. Similarly, by supplying food to the stomach, where it nourishes the life air, one satisfies all the senses. In the same way, by worshiping Krishna and rendering him service, one automatically satisfies all the demigods. Purport. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto, 31st chapter, verse number 14. So um, there is a time of the year, especially for those who, who grew up in India, who are of the Indian origin, it's just prior to um, uh, the Govardhan Puja. It's during the Kartik time. And it's about two weeks prior to Govardhan Puja where people engage in a lot of um, demigod worship. They worship Lakshmi, they worship Ganesh, they worship, uh, who else? Dorga Devi. Uh, and many other demigods for various types of material success and benefits. And that goes on for about two weeks, just prior to Govardhan Puja. And then, of course, right before Govardhan Puja is the Diwali day. And then after that, we have Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill. So um, Govardhan Hill, that whole pastime, is Krishna speaking to his father, Nanda Maharaj. Every year, Nanda Maharaj and the cowherd men would make a nice offering 
to Indra. And Krishna stepped in one year and he questioned and he dissuaded his father from doing it, saying that we are villagers. You know, rain will come automatically. We don't have to worship the god of rain in order to get rain. It comes anyway. It even rains in places where there's no need for rain. So let us worship Govardhan Hill and let's worship the cows because as cow herds, these are where we get all our, our requirements to live. And so the Nanda Maharaj finally, after questioning Krishna, agreed, yes. And so they did that. And then, of course, Indra got mad and then started pouring torrential rains upon the residents of Vrindavan so much so he was so angry that he wanted to kill them but they took shelter of Krishna calling out for Krishna and Krishna lifted the Govardhan hill and stayed there for seven days accepting worship while holding the hill so Krishna performed that activity at that particular time it's mentioned that it's been designated right after the culture of those who lived in India for years know that so much demigod worship goes on before them. And the whole, the whole yagya of uh, Nanda Maharaj was about demigod worship. But Krishna frustrated that and explained there's no need. And Krishna actually took the form of Govardhan Hill and said to worship Govardhan Hill. So he actually manifested himself in the form of the hill to accept worship on behalf of the cowherd, cowherds of Vrindavan. And therefore, those who worshiped the Dover on him were worshiping Krishna directly, although Krishna appeared both as the hill and in his person as Krishna. So he wanted to also make that point, just worship me because I'm the source of the demigods. Aham Adhi Devanam, he says in the Bhagavad Gita, the demigods get their power from me. Whatever benedictions the demigods can give are simply coming from me. Those who worship the demigods are less intelligent. So all of these statements Krishna makes to give the point that when one is worshiping Krishna, that is perfection. And automatically everything, just like when it rains, it rains on the ocean where there's no need for water. It rains on the rocks. It rains in areas where there, there is already enough rain. So, but the rain is magnanimous. It doesn't make a distinction. So in the same way, one who worships Krishna actually nourishes everyone, those connected with them and those, even those who are un, not connected with them. Just like um, just before I came on the program tonight, I was with the Harinam devotees. They were just on their way out to form Harinam in the, in the center of Ljubljana. There was about 15, 16 devotees that went out. And so um, uh, I was speaking to them just prior to their bowing. And we were explaining that uh, not only do the people who hear the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra in the Hari, in the Hari Nam benefit, along with the devotees who chant, but the whole world benefits. Wherever there's yagya, especially Sankirtan yagya, the whole world, not just this one little area where the Hari Nam is going on, but the whole world benefits because and there's no greater way to satisfy the Lord and to perform uh, glorification of the Lord for the benefit of not only for oneself, but for the benefit of others. And that's the Harinam. That's why Lord Chaitanya has given that the Harinam Sankirtan as the sinusaur or the focus of our movement. Those who perform Harinam Kirtan, going out in the streets to benedict the conditioned souls, they are performing uh, the activities that Lord Chaitanya personally came to demonstrate and to teach in his incarnation as the Chana avatar, the hidden avatar, you know, to purify the world. 
So um, the point was that not only those who are here, but even the rest of the world, millions of miles away, thousands of miles away, they are also benefiting like that. And here's the verse. And this verse supports that idea that when if you put food in the stomach, it nourishes all the parts of the body. If you put water on the root of the tree, the branches, the twigs, flowers, leaves, everything is nourished by the watering press. So one who serves the Lord uh, nourishes the entire existence, the entire creation. Because Krishna is called Mula. In other word, Mula, you'll see it in the translation here. It means root. That's another name for Krishna. He's called Mula, the root of everything. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go and see if there's another verse related to this topic. Well, then the topic now changes to different levels of devotees, okay? All right, so we'll save that for the rest. And we want to stick to this one particular um, theme that's being illustrated in these two verses, plus the, the two verses from the Bhagavatam, uh, that by serving Krishna, that is the highest and most perfect of service, which benefits not only the one who's serving, but everyone else. Okay, so we can stop here and see if there's any questions or comments. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for enlightening us on this devotional service. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, you can switch on your video, please. Guru Maharaj always suggests that. Thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, any comments, please unmute yourself or you can type in chat window. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, should I give a brief summary? So, uh, yeah. It'll be nice. Okay. So, um, Hare Krishna. Uh, so, Guru Maharaj gave uh, today information on Krishna supremacy. So, he mentioned that if we take full shelter of Krishna and his devotional service, then all the material activities at bodily level are managed and uh, uh, satisfied. Like by Govardhan Lila, Krishna gave this message that worship and serve him directly and that's the perfection of life and um, Guru Maharaj also gave uh, this uh, information that more we get serious uh, in Krishna consciousness uh, more Maya will present options to test us uh, and to deviate us from our real path so we devotee should be very serious thank you Guru Maharaj mm -hmm. Hare Krishna yeah these, these diversions that Maya presents are opportunities for advancement because they give us a chance to choose Krishna over Maya. Mm -hmm. When we accept Krishna and not accepting Maya's allurements, then we make greater amounts of, we get greater amounts of realization in the process of devotional service. So we should not think that these uh, that while I'm making advancement, things are getting tougher. No, it's just that when you go to school and depending on the grade you're in, you get a particular test according to that level of grade. So the more you uh, advance in the grades, the more the tests are more difficult. So in the same way, the more, as we advance, the tests become not impossible to, to pass, but they appear to be more of a challenge, but that's just the way, that's the purification that's needed in order to bring us to a higher state of understanding. It's Krishna's mercy, he allows that Maya to 
you know, uh, tempt us in different ways. Okay, any other, any questions or comments? Uh, Guru Maharaj, while other devotee ask, I would like to ask one question, please. So, uh, this verse is really, really important, and the one which you mentioned from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, 11, 5, 41. But I'm a bit confused, Guru Maharaj, because uh, yes, we should have firm faith on Krishna, and we should know that uh, when we are doing any service to Krishna, then everything else is going to be managed because he's the supreme. But when in 11.544, it's mentioned that you don't need to worry about any other, your family, friends, anybody. That's confusing in terms of duty versus the service. So because Krishna only is saying that we should, we have our duty towards this. And we, of course, Krishna is supreme. We have to take first priority to towards Krishna. But how we can feel that, okay, like we are completely focusing on devotional service and family, then everything will be managed. Yeah, you have so it to, looks like uh, dichotomy. Yeah, I made, the, I made the example. You have to spiritualize everything. You have to bring everything into the, into the energy of devotional service, family, occupation, everything. If you can't do that, then you should, you know, you can organize your day where you have taken responsibility. The point is that if you find yourself to choose between devotional service and material activities, then that's the test. That's what this, that's what basically it's saying that. And ultimately it means that say you decide to give up everything, your family or anything, all, everything material, and you want to become, you know, fully engaged in devotional service. Um, that has to be done under the direction of the spiritual master. And if the spiritual master says, yes, then you will make advancement. But if you do it prematurely and you're not ready for that, just like Prabhupada would say, well, he's living near Vrindavan, he's living in Delhi. And so he's thinking, well, I'm going to give up everything. I'm going to go to Vrindavan and live in Vrindavan and serve Krishna there. So he takes a large, he gives his family members a large amount of money so they can live. And he goes to Vrindavan, but he's always worried about his family members thinking, now uh, how, how are they surviving? So he's not keeping his mind on Vrindavan. Although he thinks he's renounced because he's living in Vrindavan, his mind is not in Vrindavan, his mind is still in his material affairs. So that's premature, that's like that. But there is a point that you have to give up all these things. There's no question about that. So uh, the verse is also teaching us that we should gradually detach ourselves from everything material. We should detach ourselves completely and then we should extract ourselves slowly. You know, slowly withdrawing from material activity instead of slowly becoming more involved in material activities. You know, Prabhupada tells the story of Kailash. You've heard of the story Kailash? Anybody? No? Kailas was a very dignified gentleman. He had he met Narada Muni. Narada Muni was encouraging him to take up Krishna consciousness. He had a big family. He had a very successful occupation. So after some time, uh, Narada Muni went to see him again and encouraged Kailash to, uh, you know, you know, uh, it's about time. You know, you can uh, leave everything and become Krishna conscious. Come with me. He said, well, you know, I have my businesses here and I had my children. I have to teach them how to, you know, uh, run the business. Without me, how would they be able to be successful? 
So Narada, okay, Narada left. After some time, Narada comes back many years later. He again approaches Kailash and tries to encourage him to give up everything. He says, well, you know, you know, um, well, the, well, my children are growing up now, but they have grandchildren and I'm their grandfather and they don't know how to manage their grandchildren. So what if without me, how can they become successful in taking care of their families? I have to be here. So Narada says, all right, and so he leaves again. After many years, he comes back. And now the, the children have got the bus business and their children have grown up. And uh, so the, they ask, well, Narada is asking, well, what happened? Where's Kailash? Oh, they say, oh, our grandfather, he died. And then <laughs> Narada said, oh, I lost another one. So he's starting to walk out. So as he's walking out, on this big estate, he walks across the, the estate and he hear and he sees a dog and the dog runs up to him and the dog starts to speak and says, it's me, Kailash, I became a dog. And Narada said, all right, are you ready now? He said, well, you know, I'm the guard dog here. I have to guard the estate. If, if I don't do that, who's gonna protect the family members? So Narada said, all right, and he leaves. So after some times he comes back and, and then he goes into the house and he, first he's looking for the dog, he can't find him. And then he goes into the family members. And then he says, well, where is that dog he used to have out here? Oh, they said, oh, he died. Uh, so then Narada's feeling a little sad. So he goes out and he's walking along and then he hears a sound, Psst, hey, Narada, Psst, over here. Oh, where? Oh, we're here in the bushes. Goes in the bushes, he sees a snake. It's me, Kailash, I became a snake. And Narada says, are you ready now? Well, actually, you know, the dog died and somebody's got to take care of the house. So I'm the only one. So Narada says, all right. And he leaves him, he goes back into the house. And then uh, he tells the family members, you know, you got a snake in your yard? Really? So they get they get some sticks and they come out and they start beating their grandfather, you know, with the hands. <laughs> They're smashing the stick. And then Narda says, Are you ready now, Kailash? Oh yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so that, that's our situation. Yeah, we'll we'll wait till <laughs> there's nothing left and <laughs> we'll just leave. Then we'll leave. <laughs> that's what that's what you know Vidura kept telling the Dhritarashtra, come on. I, you know, everything's gone, your children are gone, your kingdom is gone, and your your body's getting old, and you're still hanging around the house of Yudhisthira like a like a dog eating scraps from your enemies. <laughs> and then, so I told that story one time in in a very large assembly of Indian body people who was in Chicago. And, uh, you know, I had pin drop silence when they were talking, I was talking. So at the end, one man come up to me and he has a real long face and he's looking at me. And uh, then he speaks something. He says, he said, Maharaj, my name is Kailash. <laughs> So I said, well, I think the story was for you. <laughs> I didn't give him any, I, didn't, I wasn't so merciful. <laughs> so well, that's our situation. Our family responsibilities of uh, hang on to the end of life and then, and then we'll die and then we'll come back and still have more responsibilities to start over again. <laughs> we get so attached to this. So bring all the family members into Krishna consciousness. And then if you're if everybody's Krishna conscious, then your home is Vaikuntha. Like that. Otherwise, family duties are just burdensome. Responsibilities, this relative, that relative, this, this wedding, that engagement, this birthday party, <laughs> that office program. <laughs> It's endless. So man, try, and Prabhupada said, you know, 
a Krishna conscious householder who is renounced is unattached to all of the activities of household life is just as good as a sannyasi. There's no need to take a sannyasi. So, manaso deho geho yo kichu mor arpi luk tu apade nanda kishore. Bhakti Vinota Kaur, he was a householder. He had a big family, but Prabhupada called him Paramahansa Grihasta. And Bhakti Vinota Kaur used all his time in Krishna consciousness. But still, he gave enough time to his family, just what they needed for them to uh, go on in life. So yeah, become Krishna conscious and make all your family members Krishna conscious. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Otherwise, the family, the ha if, if you're a Krishna conscious and the rest of the family is not, it's like living in the desert. There's no water. So two learnings, Guru Maharaj, from this one, definitely uh, try to have association more and more in devotee uh, environment, uh, of course, including family. And then second, back of our mind, we should always remember that we need to decrease our attachment. And no, that's not good enough. <laughs> that's not good enough. What you need to do is go to Bhagavatam, Canto 3, chapter 21, verse 31. The Prabhupada spells it out clearly what Grihastas are supposed to do. Go now, it's a long purport. Go down the page and we'll uh, get to the point here. It's a very long purport. Okay, keep going. Keep going, this is a very long purport. And keep going. Let me see here. Okay, go up a little bit again. I think we passed over. Okay, okay, here it is. To award fearlessness to the common man is the greatest act of charity. So go someone else read on after that. Should I try to read Guru Maharaj? Yeah, uh, go ahead. A sannyasi or one who is in the renounced order of life should wander from door to door from village to village, from town to town, and from country to country, all over the world as far as he is able to travel, and enlighten the householders about Krishna consciousness. A person who is a householder, but is initiated by a sannyasi, has the duty to spread Krishna consciousness at home as far as possible. He should call his friends and neighbors to his house and hold classes in Krishna consciousness. Holding a class means chanting the holy name of Krishna and speaking from Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. There are immense literatures for spreading Krishna consciousness and it is the duty of each and every householder to learn about Krishna from his sannyasi spiritual master. There is a division of labor in the Lord's service. The householder's duty is to earn money because a sannyasi is not supposed to earn money, but is completely dependent on the householder. The householder should earn money by business or by profession and spend at least 50% of his income to spread Krishna consciousness. 25% he can spend for his family and 25% he should save to meet emergencies. This example was shown by Rupa Goswami, so devotee should follow it. Okay, so that, that particular paragraph says, learn about Krishna consciousness from your spiritual master, call your friends and relatives and others, have home programs, and um, speak, and um, have kirtan, bravachan, and uh, distribute prashan. That Mm, that is very, very powerful. Yeah. 
And it's the, uh, all the facilities that are available are right there within the home. All they have to do is invite others and, and arrange for programs like that. And that way, more when more and more householders do this, and then Krishna consciousness will spread quickly. We don't have to simply depend on the temples for everything. Every, we can find uh, everything we need right in the, in the home. So yeah, we should all be doing some kind of home programs. Otherwise, the home is just uh, it's, it's just a place to take care of the body. That's all. It's, Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I think it's very important. But Guru Maharaj, like one thing, uh, yes, doing uh, inviting friends and family at home and doing Krishna consciousness katha and kirtan is important. But I think doing these things at other devotee home also can be part of that. Like in Karthik Damodar month, we went every day new devotee or new family home. They were not even devotee. And they invited lots of new friends and their family members. That's nice. Is that also considered that same Guru Maharaj or? Well, as long as people are coming together to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, that is, that is the goal, yeah. It doesn't matter how it's arranged, that's the goal. Pravachan, Kirtan, Prashad. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That's the ingredients for the program. And if you, if you can't find anybody to speak, you read. Just like I was disappointed on Sunday, I couldn't make it to the class. And nobody, nobody did anything. It was the worries waiting online for me to come. And anybody could have picked up a book and just started to read and discuss, and nobody did it, you know. So uh, I was really quite disappointed that nobody took, took the initiative. Well, uh, Maharaj is not here. We can do something. So yeah, this is, this is what this, they're saying here. If you can call a sannyasi to your home and have him speak, that's nice, but that doesn't mean you don't have a program. If you can, you can just pick up a book, you can read from Krishna book, and then you can discuss. Or you can have everyone read a little bit, and then you have, you have transcendental knowledge uh, circulating. We shouldn't be so dependent only on those who are preachers to do things. We have to take the initiative ourselves. Mm -hmm. what, is, what, is the, what is the value of hearing if we're not actually doing anything? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. We'll definitely take care. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Krishna consciousness means, you know, using your intelligence to, to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, inspiring people to come together to do that program. Anyone else? Namrata, you have something to say? I'm just listening, Maharaj. <laughs> okay. I, I uh, right now I'm in uh, at my mother's place, at my parents' place. Um, Mansi Mataji has come. I'm hoping uh, uh, we'll attend your lecture. I'm trying to connect with her. I'm hoping we'll attend your lecture together. Who's that? Mansi Mataji Dittesh Prabhuji. Oh, oh, they're there. Yes. Um, okay, so, yeah. so I'm arranging with them to attend the lecture together. 
Good, good. Thank you. And uh, we're also uh, we're also arranging a, a there's a place called Dakur here in Gujarat where there's a temple of uh, Ranchodji. Yeah, go see the deities and take some prasadam and yeah, so uh, yes, so we are arranging a group of people and uh, we are thinking to go there. Don't think, go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are arranging that, Maharaj. So yeah. we, uh, we can't get the times are getting really quite the world is on fire and things are just next year is going to be hell so if we're if we're lazy in our krishna consciousness we're going to be in trouble we have to be very proactive now we, we have to we have to juice up our activities in krishna consciousness more chanting more preaching more association more 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 the material world is going to keep start collapsing all around us. You start seeing it. I'm not just a doomsday prophet. It's 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 right in front of our face, and it's happening in a planned way too. So um, we read about the Bhagavatam. We hear about wars and demons and, and so many other things. We think, oh, that was in the past. <laughs> it's in the present too. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come right at the right time when people need Krishna consciousness more than ever. It's the only thing that's going to save this, uh, this, this civilization from going to hell. It's Krishna consciousness. And we're having great amounts of response here. The devotees are going out every night now for, for kirtan for two to three hours. And they're distributing over a hundred books every night. And uh, people are coming forward. So, uh, yeah, it's a great time to organize. Don't just sit at home and chant your Hare Krishna beads and expect everything to go on nicely like that. That might have been good years ago, but not now. <laughs> We have to get a, we have to get together with devotees more often and have more programs, more chanting, more more sanghas, more seminars, more opportunities to associate, more opportunities to, to have kirtan. A material life will always be there. It's not so important. Yes, Maharaj. We sometimes really understand that after after reading or after hearing all this uh, Krishna consciousness, what Prabhupada has given us, we understand. But when we approach, uh, maybe even if they are closed ones, even if they are relatives, if we try to make them understand the well, the they, relative, the relatives they, are the hardest, the hardest people. You don't want to bother with relatives. You know, they never change. <laughs> Focus on other people. <laughs> As you grow in your own spiritual life, maybe your relatives will slightly change, but you're wasting your time trying to get the family members, to, you know, especially if they're elderly and they're in a position of seeing you as, you know, as, as they see you. They don't see you as something of somebody they... They, look, you can, they can learn from. They don't see that. Don't worry about them. <laughs> we'll come along or not come along. Why They say, why throw, why pour ghee on ashes? You're just wasting the ghee. <laughs> Go where there's people who are ready to hear. Well, you need to organize, you know, 
unless we associate with devotees and get involved with the programs. We want to do that more and more. Like we have Nitai Nataraj, he's there. He's driving right now. He's in his van. You can see the beads are shaking back and forth. That means he's driving along. So everybody who comes into it, he drives Uber. So everybody who walks into his car, they he, he plays Prabhupada's tapes or he plays the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And then he looks for the opportunity to speak to them. And he, he gives out books, so many things, he gives out mantra cards. Sometimes he invites people to come to the temple. He uses his occupation simply to preach Krishna consciousness. Any, each and every one of us can do something. We shouldn't be lazy. Krishna consciousness is not about just you know fingering the beads and that's the end of it. It's about, you know, looking, who can I give Krishna consciousness to? Who can I benedict? Can I give some prasadam? Can I invite people to a temple? So can I go to a home program and meet some more people, develop relationships, and then have more programs? Krishna and Prabhupada, how did Prabhupada expand the movement? He wasn't just thinking in terms of, well, you know, whoever comes, that's nice. He had hundreds of ideas on how to reach out. So we might be a little shy or more a little bit introverted and something, but we can always do something. I'm speaking not simply because I want to, you know, kind of say these things, but the, the times are really critical right now. It's really critical. And uh, the world is going through some hellish times. And it's going to get worse materially. Don't expect things to get better. It's, that's a daydream. Mm -hmm. That's a daydream. Uh, and so, and Prabhupada said, you know, these cities will they'll, they'll fall apart. Uh, the cities will crumble, he said. He said, develop these farm communities. Mm -hmm. So I, I just finished writing, uh, not writing a book. I did, took all my lectures into a series and we printed it into a form of a book. The book should be ready in within a couple of weeks. We hope to uh, print the book. It's all about, you know, simple living, natural living, Krishna consciousness. Like that. That's for lifestyle. But right now, if we're in the cities or in our houses, wherever we are, you know, make plans to spread Krishna consciousness. You're spreading Krishna consciousness is your own spiritual advancement. Everyone can do something. That's why that verse, you know, from the Bhagavatam that Rindavanath read about the duties of a householder. Robot doesn't write these things just because he wants to fill up the pages of a book so he can have a fat book. He's telling us these are these are our duties. Anything when you're engaged in Krishna consciousness, Krishna provides everything you need. Whatever you need, he'll help provide, don't worry. And he'll provide in, maybe not right away, but he'll provide in due course of time. We don't have to worry about our own situation. We're, we have everything we need. Now we have to give it. The greatest form of charity is knowledge. 
you give money, if you give food, that's charity. But greater than that is knowledge. If one people have knowledge, they can solve their own problems. You feed a person, if you give them something, some money, they can use it and then it's gone and then they require the same again very soon. But if you give people knowledge, then they can see how can they can change their own life and uh, solve their own problems. Transcendental knowledge is the greatest form of charity. <laughs> We don't care about people that don't care, don't, don't, that don't agree with us. We just shake them off. Forget about those that don't agree with us. If they don't want to change, that's fine. We just focus on the people who are, who maybe, who are out there, who maybe we can make, an, make some influence on. Them. I mean, in India, you can talk to anybody, right? If you're in India. In the West, it becomes hard to talk to people sometimes because there's more barriers there. And people in India are more open. And if you just go up to somebody and start talking, a lot of times they just listen. You know? <laughs> it's just like <laughs> that, that more that personal culture is still, it's, it's being eroded away by materialism, but it's still there. Yes, Maharaj. I'll try to do it. I'm not lecturing you. I'm just, <laughs> just saying that I, I just feel there's there's such a there's such a there's such an emergency right now to spread Krishna consciousness like ever like ever before. Never before has there's such a, I mean, why? Because, uh, and you know, people are buying our books like crazy over here. I don't know. They're buying, it's like some of them don't even know why they're buying it, but they're looking for something. They're, they're feeling unsatisfied with, their, with the present situation that's going on around. The material life is being ripped out from underneath. <laughs> and so people are, you know, some people are trying to put it back together. So others are trying to adjust it where it works in some ways. And other people are thinking, well, <laughs> there must be a better way. And there's others who are willing to uh, do anything they can to uh, somehow or other save their sense gratification. So uh, yeah, I, I'm really concerned that now we, st we have to really be more and more proactive in our devotional service. Every each and every devotee should be engaged in some program to associate and reach out to the conditioned souls, whether you do it through the media or do you do it directly? Uh, either way, somehow. And the more devotees that get involved, the more, the easier the workload is for everyone. <laughs> As they say, many hands make light work. <laughs> So we have a big job. We have to spread Krishna consciousness around the world. That's why we, that's what Prabhupada gave us. He said, become Krishna conscious and give it to others. And it's just the greatest form of happiness when you give it to others. There's nothing, nothing higher than that. Ivana, Hare Krishna, how are you? Hare Krishna, please. Uh, uh, I'm okay. <laughs> yes. Are you in? Are you in? Uh, what is? What is the name of that place you live in? 
What I'm the, the name of the, the town you live in. Uh huh, Petrina. Petrina, that's where they had the earthquake last year, right? Yes, yes. December 29, 2020. Yes. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is the anniversary of the earthquake. Yes. <laughs> Oh. I don't want to scare you. I know you were right there when it happened, right? Yes, in the house. That earthquake was big. Yes, that was, uh, I never, never felt something like that before. I mean, it was really, I don't know, but uh, my house somehow managed to stay uh, together. Stay together, yes. Yeah, I was. I'm here in Ljubljana. I'm about 150 miles away from where the earthquake was. I felt it here. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I know it was really, I don't know. Very severe. Yes. <laughs> the material nature, you know, strong. Yes. So yeah, we are, li we are in living in the material world, we're living on shaky ground. <laughs> No one should think, oh, well, I'm young, I'm okay. The material world doesn't make that distinction. It's, it's a place of, of calamity. Calamities happen all the time. It's just the way it is. So, we pray that December 29th, 2021 will be a very nice day for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there were some devotees, some devotees were telling me when that earthquake happened that because the demons, they hide in underground, many of the demons. So when that earthquake came, so many demons came out of the ground. Yeah. And these devotees were telling me they were seeing these demons, really ferocious monsters, really. So yeah, earthquakes mean is a way to release the demons from, they come out of, from underneath the ground. They live in the earth, some of them. Hmm. They have different bodies like us, not like ours. And some devotees say maybe it was the demons that caused the earthquake too. So <laughs> but then so again my, mm -hmm. that town you live in, what is it? But Petrina is called Petrina, yes. Petrina. It's famous for slaughterhouse, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Has a lot of slaughterhouses for chickens and for animals. And house also yeah. cows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's why it happened, right? Because, right, so many cows were being killed. Yes. And maybe it's time to go, <laughs> that I go somewhere else. And maybe on some farm <laughs> with Savitri or something. <laughs> Savitri, yeah. There's many devotees who have farms. <laughs> Yes, Dimitri, I have Astasaki, I have uh, Divya Prabanda. Divya Prabanda is in Croatia, and Astasaki is here in Slovenia. And then there's other devotees who have farms too. There's a farm in Celia, many farms. The devotees need help too, they're running the farms. Sometimes with very little help. Mm 
Okay, so anything else? Any other comments, questions? Anything? Swaha, say something. Anything, just tell us, tell us about Sri Sri Radha Kunja Vihari. I can show instead of it and plan to, to tell one minute. Okay. okay. One minute. Okay. Just one second, I have. Oh, no, I can't flip. They are here. Okay. Here they are. Um, we are bringing them in closer. Yeah. Can you can you bring? Yeah, shut the lights off here, and the light the light makes yeah, it glare. Oh, that's nice. We can see. Get a little closer, though. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Did you make Did you make those clothes for them? Yes. Yes, it's winter outfit. <laughs> Rani's got a very interesting hat, and so does Krishna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can show it small. We have something. And you can show Prabhupada. That's Lad of Gopal there, right? Yeah. Prabhupada. And, Prabhupada. and then is that Haridas Thakur too? No, it's Prabhupada. Oh, here. No, the, uh, on the other it, side. On the on other side. side, yes. That's Hari. Yeah, Hari Das Thakur. Yeah. Wow, nice. Yeah. Namacharya Sula Hari Das Thakur Ki Jai. Beautiful, nice flowers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Krishna likes flowers. Yeah, you can put from the distance a little bit also. But yeah, like this. <laughs> Very nice altar. Very nice. Yeah, and we have Guru Parampara here. Parampara. And here, here is my husband's Guru Mataji and Guru. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you for the darshan. Yeah. Uh, Raj, you're going to take us on a boat ride? You're right near the water. Only I could, Maharaj. Well, you're in the holy place of, is that, uh, is that Radhakun? Yes. Hmm. I put pictures on my backgrounds in my work. So every day I might have meetings and then they'd say, What's that picture of today? And then I can talk to them about it. Good. It's preaching. Yeah. Yesterday you had Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. So, nice. Hare Krishna. Okay, so. Hare Krishna, good morning. Please accept my humble obeisances. All grace to Srila Prabhupada. You have an auto? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, sure. Is it got deities? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Oh, we, come on. Why? We, come on, give us a break. Yes, Show Guru us Maharaj. the deities. We know, I never saw your deities. 
you saw Gurmaraj, maybe you forgot. I'll send, I'll show it again. Okay. Let's see. Oh, wow. Jagannath. Yes, Jai sir. Jagannath, Baba Dave, Subhadra Maharani, Ki Jai. Very colorfully dressed, nicely. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Now I remember. Shri Devi Mataji, Shri Devi Mataji gave us these DTs. You remember Guru Maharaj last year? Shri Devi. Yeah, this year um, in April, uh, we brought uh, them from oh, Shri Devi Mataji. Now I remember. And you, yeah, you we were, repainted them and. Uh, they were uh, sick and you, they're sick and you, and you cured them, right? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Jai Jagannath. Jagannath is very personal. He's very, whoever worships Jagannath always has a nice relationship with him. He's so, so personal. Yes, Guru Maharaj. A lot of things happened in our house uh, because of Jagannath coming into our house. Good things? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Good. The first thing is our initiation. Oh. And later we organized a wedding in our house. So. Good. I'm still, my next trip to yes, America. Yes, Guru Maharaj, we are waiting. <laughs> I'm going to book my ticket to Dallas so I don't get diverted to any other place. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And you have some like some little six by six room that I can sleep in? <laughs> and definitely, Guru Maharaj. We have arranged everything. Six feet by six feet, that's all I need. I have a room for you, Guru Maharaj. Good. See, so you have a nice library. That's yes, also Didi's. Oh, beautiful. I have a lot of books. <laughs> Starting from Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam, Shape Chanya Charitamrita, three set volume of Bhakti Siddhanta's life. Yes, Guru Maharaj. One of the Gitas. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. The, the, the transcendental scriptures, they're actually deities. They're meant to be honored and worshipped. Mm -hmm. We worship, the, the, we worship the, the Bhagavatam by reading the Bhagavatam every day and by giving Bhagavatam to others. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're giving us a tour of your house. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So, um, Guru Maharaj, um, thank you so much for today's class. And um, I sincerely want to apologize for not doing up to the standard um, on Sunday class. <laughs> so I was spaced out and um, mm -hmm. I couldn't, uh, I didn't pay attention. Uh, that's why we just wasted our time on that day waiting for you uh, to come online. Um, I'm so sorry. It will not repeat again. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. You can, you can always read. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, yeah, I know. Even you if, told me earlier. Least... I totally forgot and I spaced out. And uh, actually, I was not paying attention much and I left everything to Satya Bhama Mataji. Um, so. I was a rascal for not coming, but <laughs> I had <laughs> reasons. I, ha I was. A, I no, was we a... were following your class and your Kirtan. Um, online on YouTube parallelly while waiting here. So um, so like that, uh, we were following your Kirtan and everything. And uh, later we realized that uh, you, you must have got tired and uh, uh, got caught up with well, something there. Um, so. You wouldn't, yeah, we had, there was a, we had Kirtan and then there was devotees who I hadn't seen in a long time. So we were talking. It's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, always, uh, I'll try to be there, like tonight. Uh, the devotees wanted me to come on the Harinam, and I was thinking, 
if I go in a hurry now, then the devotees will sit there and wait for me, and then I'll you know, close this computer again. <laughs> so I thought, but then I said, I can't be happy if I go in a hurry now, and then making everybody wait when I told them I would be there. So I said, all right, I can't go in a hurry now. So I left. But the Harinam, I mean, we, the Harinam here is really good. The devotees are really fired up for Harinam. We got some good kirtan leaders, and the kirtans are really powerful. Books go out, the devotees chant and dance, and Sri Devi's here, and she's like the life of the Harinam. <laughs> Yeah, the devotees are still out. It's six thirty at night. It's completely dark out. They go out every night from five to seven thirty, and, and they pass by the restaurants and the bars. And, because in Ljubljana, everything is there's a whole ser series of places where no cars go. It's just people, and it's it's all like you know, nightlife. So they go down there and just distribute books and chat and dance. We want to do that everywhere in the world and revive the whole Harinam program. If you look at the old Back to Godhead magazines, the ones that first came out when our movement started back in the 1960s, You'll see practically every issue of those magazines on every page is Harinams around the world. That was the news, the Harinam parties around the world. And that went on for years. If you can see copies of the old Back to Godhead magazine, there were articles in there, but all the, all the photos were Harinams one after another. And then after that, book distribution came in. And so those two became the focus of our society. And that's how Krishna consciousness spread. Krishna consciousness didn't spread because of just one person and people giving lectures in temples. Krishna consciousness spread by book distribution in Harinam. That's how it spread fast around the world. So it's still alive. It's not like that was good then. It still is good now. Harinam, distribution. And devotees associating together and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. That's our process. That takes us to the spiritual world, makes us forget all our material problems, and just enlivens the senses of the mind. And Oh, and then we think, I want more of this. <laughs> so tomorrow is Ekadasi in the, in the United States? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm in, I'm in uh, Europe, so most European countries have Ekadasi on Thursday. So I guess because of Thursday's program with the devotees from Harrisburg, we'll, uh, we'll focus tomorrow on the topic will be the holy name. Sure, good much. And then maybe afterwards we can uh, also do a little extended chanting. Sure, good much. And uh, um, Guru Maharaj, I want to uh, humbly request you, can you stay back on the Zoom call for five minutes more uh, so that we'll figure out about that verification code which you are getting in your email um, because we are not able to access the recordings. Um, so you are, whenever we try to log in into Zoom uh, on the website to access recordings, it is asking verification code, which is going to your email. Um, we just want to- I said. That. Yeah, I sent you that. E that email. Yeah, but that, is, uh, that will expire in 10 minutes, Guru Maharaj, once you receive it. So we should have a fresh code. Um, and we have to do when you are present online, when you are accessing your email. So what do I have to do? Yeah, once after this session, um, 
we'll just try to log in again and you'll get a verification code in your email gurmaraj and if you can please tell us and tell that code to us then uh, it will so when they're going to send me a verification code on my email and yes. I'll, I'll just forward it to you yes or you can just tell us online when we while we are here you can just read it out um, should i go look at my email now um no Maharaj, uh, once we end the call um and all the devotees leave um then we can oh so when the recording stops yes Guru Maharaj. okay you can stop the recording at any time right yes Guru Maharaj.